Hey everyone, it's Shelly here at Bella Moto, and in this video I'm going to show you the steps to making the necklace that I am wearing. Uh, the pendant I have here, which is a gorgeous maple leaf, is actually a button with a little shank on the back. So I thought as I was making this it would be useful to make a video to show you uh, exactly how I did the wire working on here to make it hang like a pendant rather than a button. And I continued on with the rest of the necklace as well. So it is a little lengthy. They, I had some issues with sound, so there is a little, a little bit of choppiness there. But um, all the steps are there for you, and I'm assuming some of you maybe are just really curious on the wire working technique I, I did on this one. So that's at the beginning of the video. Enjoy, and uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions about the techniques I'm doing in any of these videos. And happy creating. Have fun. Hey everyone, it's Shelly here at Bello Moto, and uh, I'm starting on a project here today with this lovely leaf, which is actually a button. You can see the, the little shank is right there on the back of it. Now I want this leaf to be a pendant, and I plan on doing some bead stringing. So, as we know, if I hang the button just as such on my beading string, it doesn't hang like I want it to, like a pendant. I want it to hang upright and nicely like this. So um, I'm thinking about my options and I decide I'm going to do a little bit of wire work. And I actually worked this out once before and I know it's solid because I had a really hard time getting it off. Um, but I took it apart so that I could remake it and show you how I worked this out. So what I have here is a piece of 22 gauge vintage colored uh, parawire and I it's about about 14 to 15 inches long so I'm putting this through this is what I did first and I'm just going to loop this back through the shank and pull that nice and tight so that it makes a tight loop right around the shank there and I am really going to repeat this several times because I want my base to be really nice and solid. I don't want this pendant to be hanging in an awkward way. I want it to I want it to hang the way I want it to hang. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the other side now here for a couple of loops through the shank. And I think if you used anything other than 22 gauge wire, it would be too thick. And I believe 24 would probably be too thin. So I am doing about two to three times through the shank. And I am keeping my wraps kind of at the top here. Just until it feels like it's really solid. And I'm kind of holding my thumb, you can see, to... Uh, line up where it's going to go. And just pulling my wire nice and straight as I tighten those up. That seems to be pretty good. I think I'm maybe going to go through just one more time. Just get a nice solid base. There. That feels good. Okay. So I have wrapped each side through uh, several times. So now what I did is I folded each wire up on either side of the stem of the leaf there so that it's up front. And I kind of crossed my wires and I'm pulling these really nice and taut. I want everything to be nice and tight. Now as I've crossed this one over from the other side, I'm going to run it back through to the back and do the same with this side. And then I'm just going to kind of repeat my actions one more time. Fold these wires, crisscross them up to the front, and crisscross them to the back one more time. Now I have a pretty darn solid base if you can see. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to kind of straighten out my wires as I go because I'm doing a lot of bending. 
I'm going to cross these over each other in the back. I'm going to give it just one little twist. As you can see, I tend to use my fingers a lot for my wire work. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to just angle it straight up. I'm going to kind of put my other wire off to the side a little bit. I guess it wants to go that way. And hold on one moment. All right, I've got my favorite wolfy pliers here. So what I'm going to do is start about, I'm going to guess about that far up because I want to loop this 22 gauge wire twice to make a bail for the top. So there I have made a one loop. I'm going to go around there and make one more loop. So I have two complete loops around my round nose pliers there. And I have my one wire sticking off the back and my tail from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hold on to this. A flat nose would work as well. And I am going to start wrapping my tail around the stem of this leaf. I want to just kind of coil it around. Okay, now I feel like my bale here is kind of set in place a bit now. I may have to adjust it later, so I'm going to go ahead and just use my fingers. And just continue to wrap a nice tight coil around the stem of the leaf. I'm going to pull each coil nice and taut. Now a lot of people would probably be using pliers at this point. If there's stuff that I can do with my hands, I just feel like I have a little bit more control with my hands, and uh, I tend to use them as my first tool more often maybe than most. Okay, so I've got to kind of the base of this uh, of the stem here. So I'm gonna come in with my wire cutters. Sorry, I'm just grabbing my tools. I'm doing this video kind of on a whim and wasn't totally prepared. So I'm going to just snip that wire that I just wrapped off. And I'm going to tuck my tail in on the back. It's one of the secrets to doing any wire work is just hiding your tails away. Or you can't visibly see them on front. Okay, and now I'm left with this tail back here. Alright, so... Uh, something happened with my sound, so I'm dubbing over this. Hopefully I can uh, line up and remember to to say everything I did the first time around. <laughs> so I'm just taking this tail here and starting at the bottom of the stem, I am wrapping some fairly tight coils back up to the top where my bale is. And uh, this is really quite a bit of wrapping, and I really like how it looked. I like how it turned out. It's extremely strong. If you don't want to wrap uh, both tails all the way the, through the length of the stem, I think that is perfectly okay. I think this can be altered a bit. I just really liked how this one turned out, so I thought it would be easier to show you in this video how to make it rather than um, try to write out these directions. <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, we have built just a really solid base and the bale is on the top. We'll have to snip that little piece of wire off there, safely away from your eyes. And um, just tuck in that little tail. We want to make sure that there's nothing poking or scratching that's going to poke our skin. 
and I think the last thing to do here is to take my round nose into the top bail again and just kind of straighten that out and make sure it's uh, shaped nicely after all the bending I've done around it. And I'm just going to give this a really good tug to kind of test it out. And as you can see, this is just a really, really solid wire wrap. It is not going anywhere. It's not going to bend on me. It's going to hold its shape and hang really nicely from this necklace. So what a great way to turn this button into a pendant. I just am really a fan of these leaves and I'm excited to show you the rest of this necklace and how I put it together. So here we go. All right, everybody, I'm back. I have strung up the majority of my piece. As you can see, once I put my leaf on my beading wire, it hangs just how I want it to, like a nice pendant rather than a button. And what I have strung up here is some of the 5052 mini round beads, which I'm becoming more and more of a fan of from Swarovski. And these are in crystal lilac shadow. And I'm also really loving the newer color Blackberry in the Swarovski Pearls. So I have some 12 millimeter and some 8 millimeter pearls in here. And uh, the Canopy Bead Cap from Vintage, which is an 11 and a half millimeter bead cap. Um, so I have just crimped one end because I do want to show you one thing here. So these are 12 millimeter pearls and an 11 and a half millimeter bead cap. As you can see, they're not sitting totally just on the pearl like I want them to. But here's the beauty of brass. It will bend for you. It's a really nice malleable metal. So all I'm going to do is just give these a little pinch with my finger. And that's all it takes. And see how perfectly they fit those 12 millimeter pearls now. So if you have, you know, brass bead caps, don't be afraid to push them a little bit. Obviously, don't overdo it. You're not going to get something that is much smaller to fit this without scratching your bead. Um, a lot of silver plated bead caps are also brass with silver plating, so you can easily just bend those to fit your bead. I have also flattened these out, not these specific bead caps, but other brass bead caps, flattened them out with a hammer to use as a flat piece in riveting or other projects. So I'm just going down the line here and giving all of my bead caps a good pinch so that they fit really nicely. And I'm going to be finishing the back half of this piece with chain, I decided. So I have one of my crimps done on this end and attached to chain. And now that uh, my bead caps are all pinched down how I want them to, I'm going to go ahead and crimp this other end. So I'm just going to go ahead and crimp this other end. I want to make sure my, my beads are all strung on there nice and tightly. And since I'm using a chunk of chain on either end, I'm just going to get my chain on the end there. That's what I'm going to loop around. And what I have on the bottom here is a vintage flower bead, a crimp bead, and then another vintage flower bead. Um, I tend to like to put another bead on the other end of my crimp. I feel like it just looks a little bit nicer. Um, so those are all in place and so all I need to do is uh, put my string through the end several beads through the flowers and the crimp and I am going to slide it back through the end Swarovski crystal bead and the pearls are strong or drilled just too thin so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to get my string back through there. So that'll be it. I'll just run it through those. And I'm going to make sure everything is pulled nice and tight, but with leaving that nice little, you know, loop at the end, you don't want to be pulling your chain too tightly onto the necklace. So that's just going to, that's just going to stress your, your beading wire and make it break. So, uh, 
All the beads are nice and tight together, but we have a little room at the end, so I just need to go in and crimp this. And so I'm going to grab my little micro crimpers here. Um, I will be doing some basics videos soon, I promise. I'll show you crimpers and um, various tools and some basic techniques and stuff if this isn't something that you are familiar with. So with the crimping pliers, you use one notch to kind of make an indentation and then you come around with the other notches and uh, fold the crimp over itself essentially to make kind of a nice little ball. And so that feels pretty solid. I'm just going to go in and snip the tail of my wire off. And there we go. I am almost done. I'm really loving how this project's turning out. All right, so as you can see, we have our lovely wire work that turned this button into a perfectly hanging pendant. I have strung the part of the piece that I want to strung, and I've ended it with crimp beads and attached those ends to a chain on the end um, since I like mixing, mixing my pieces up a bit. And the last thing I'm going to do is when I use chain like this, I really like making my length adjustable. And to do that, I just use either a lobster claw clasp or a hook clasp. So putting that clasp on makes me easily able to hook this into whatever length I want so I can wear this necklace at a longer length or at a shorter length. And I'm going to give you one more little tip here. A lot of the chain we offer, uh, especially in the Vintage line as well as the uh, Nun Design line, you are able to open up like a jump ring. So meaning this chain is not fused. You can open it right up like a jump ring. I'm using my fingernail there because my other pliers is out of reach. So meaning I don't need to grab extra jump rings, I'm just going to attach that right there. Sorry, let me go grab my pliers. I'm really not prepared today, am I? I was not expecting to do a video. I was just inspired to share this project with you as I was working on it. So I've just opened up the end of my chain. I've dropped my uh, lobster claw clasp on. I'm going to close that back up just like I would a jump ring, making sure I get a good connection there. And then the other thing that I think, especially when you're ending your necklace with chain and want it to be adjustable, meaning we're going to hook that in any length we want, I like adding a little drop. So I've made a little drop with one of the Vintage Flower Beads and an 8mm Swarovski Blackberry Pearl. So again, I am just going to open up a little length on the end of my chain to attach my drop. And that just adds a little extra pretty to the back. And I can hook my lobster claw in wherever I want on the chain, depending on how long I want to wear the piece. And that just, you know, adds a little extra nice. And it looks quite nice hanging down your back, too, if you're wearing a wide collared shirt. Uh, so there's my project. Thanks for uh, hanging in there with me with this long video today. And have a fantastic time creating.